Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're back into our Let's Play tutorial for a great 4X game called Old World. We are going through the tutorials to learn all the different mechanics of this game and figure out how to play it so you can jump right in. It is currently only on the Epic Game Store, but will be coming to Steam in the second quarter of 2022. So I want to get you ready for that because this is really worth it. Uh, in my opinion, the best 4X game of this type I've ever played. So we are in the third tutorial right now and we have a few goals that we have to accomplish we have to expand our nation to three cities well we already have two and i'm on one of those pella here uh we need to research divination we have actually done that you see right down here divination research now why is that important well that will allow us to start building shrines shrines will give us culture it will also allow us to spread greek paganism and we are greeks so that's a good thing uh we want a lot of good greek pagans out there uh, now eventually you can get into the monotheistic religions uh, but that comes later on they are quite powerful and you'll want to do that but uh, for now anyway we want a lot of greek pagans and then finally influence three more characters you see up here we're at zero of three right Right now um, and you can see our characters over here and we'll continue to talk more and more about the character the role-playing aspects of, the, of this game as we move forward through this tutorial so let's go ahead and click here on divination research because we have now completed that task and you see here you have researched divination and may now build shrines Greece has four shrines to choose from now this is going to be the same for any of the civilizations that you play they're going to have four different pagan shrines that, that can be built, obviously customized to whatever that civilization is. But we have the Shrine of Athena, Poseidon, Hades, and Zeus. Each shrine gives slightly different bonuses. Mouse over each shrine to view their details. You are now free to choose any technology to research, but you should consider researching trapping as soon as you can to allow training of the slinger unit. Don't forget that bonus cards such as free settler only appears once, and that's very important uh, for what we're about to see. If you skip a bonus card, it is discarded immediately, okay? Build any shrine to found Greek paganism in one of your cities. I will build a shrine. Okay, but now since we just got through divination, it's going to pop this up here because we got to get a new research going. And if we go to the view, the tech tree, you can see we already have iron working. Okay, we have stone cutting. So we have a lot of the basics, right? The only basic we don't have is trapping. We have divination. Oh, that's wrong. We don't have administration either. Okay, good to know. Let's go back, though. And up here, we can, uh, again, see the different ones we can choose from this time. This is out of the pile. And uh, they said the free settler card, this is kind of like a bonus unit card, it'll only appear once. If you don't take it now, it's gone, right? And so I would recommend that you always pick these. I mean, we need to get trapping, but trapping's not an option here. Uh, we could, you know, reshuffle I guess, but let's take the free settler because we're going to need a settler anyway. And that reminds me uh, because we are building a settler over here in Massalia. Well, we're not going to need this really. Let's click on Massalia and let's go down here to the settler um, and let's actually do something else. All right. And so we could hurry this along if we wanted to. But let's lose the settler progress because we just started this one. But now that we're uh, researching that, we're going to get one in three years anyway. Why wait 12 for another one? So let's lose the settler progress. And then we see here Idle City. Okay. So we'll click on it again. And now we can choose any of these other things. A settler, a worker, a scout, militia, a, a warrior here. Or we could do one of these things like a festival uh, for instance, well, let's kind of talk about Masalia a little bit. We've got one citizen. It's kind of got weak culture. We've got just a little bit of discontent, right? And so if we look at the different civic projects that we could initiate, so this is a little bit different than creating a unit, right? These just give you bumps and bonuses. They cost eight civics, or at least they do here anyway. 
If we picked a festival, upon completion, we would get plus 20 growth and negative 20 discontent. So, uh, you know, add festival, we get plus one culture per year. Okay, we could do the Olympiad, which would give us more of a militaristic bent. We would get 50 um, training and plus one training per year if we add the Olympiad. And then the council upon completion would give us plus 40 percent civics, plus 40 percent training and plus 40 percent money. Well, I kind of like that. That's only that's one year, right? Hold shift to repeat until canceled. So we would do this every year, right? Because this is a one year thing um, or hold control to insert at the end. This is if we were queuing them up, right? I think I'm going to pick the council and we're going to, you know, it's going to cost us a little bit of civics, uh, but we'll do this council and we'll get some nice buffs and bonuses there. Instead, you know, I mean, we could build another worker, <clears throat> we're certainly going to need another worker. We want to exploit this gold mine here, but we're going to follow along uh, to the <laughs> to the best of our ability here. Uh, now it says build shrine. That's kind of the other thing that we're going to have to do here. So let's close the view of Masali. I just want to make sure that both of our cities have something going on. You can see we're going to get another worker in Pella in two years. That's what we're currently doing there. Um, let's go down here. Unit attacked by barbarians. Where was that? Well, that was up here where we're trying to take our third city site. Okay, so we'll right click there. We know about that. Improvement finished. The mine is finished right there. Okay, well, let's click on the worker and let's see what we can do. Now, it wants us to build a shrine. And what is this? Well, this is build Odeon. That is just, you know, it enable. it's an urban improvement. It enables the poet and the theater that is not a shrine, okay? Uh, we could also build the Shrine of Zeus here. Well, that is a shrine, and so we're probably going to want to go do that. We could build a farm, or we could build a quarry. Now, you can remember uh, in the last tutorial, we went up here and built the quarry first, but I think we want to try to knock this out of building a shrine, and so let's do that. Let's move our worker over here and click on building a shrine. That's going to take him four years. We have another worker that's coming in two years. He can go build the mine or the Odeon uh, if we want to. So the Shrine of Zeus is now being built, and we will uh, you know, start to get this goal taken care of. We're taking care of expanding the cities by uh, fighting these barbarians out here. Speaking of which, let's go to next unit, and let's go up here, and let's look at this battle. We're 4.8 on the attack the defenders are 4.3 okay we do have that general who is uh, a member of a different family and let's go ahead and hit there because we do have an advantage and it, we have now moved in here we killed the barbarians and we have claimed this city site for greece so we're going to want them to sit here until we get a settler over there well we're researching we're getting there three years okay so let's go to the next unit that is these warriors over here well what do we want to do with them um this is the edge of the map you can tell it's black there right this is protected from the south by water. There's not, and here's the edge of the map to the north. There's not a whole lot left unexplored here. It's very unlikely we're going to get attacked here. So I'd rather bring my warriors over here to our capital city and probably put them on sentry duty, right? Uh, so let's move them as far as we can. You can see that would be a forced march. Let's just take them to the edge, to the forest there. So they're going to chill there for until the next turn. And then we also still have the scout. So let's uh, use the rest of our orders. We have four orders left. Now we only have three. And let's get the scout out here looking around. He sees a lot of ocean out here. Um, is there anything? Yeah, let's move him up here on the pigs. And we cannot harvest them. I think we harvested them earlier. And want, you know, it takes a while for them to build back up. Uh, what do we have here? Improvement finished. Okay, we already did that. Camp destroyed. The barbarian's hovel was destroyed. We know that. Technology discovered. And bonus effects. Hovel. Oh, when we took the barbarian's hovel, we got 50 iron. Excellent. Okay. Um, click to show notifications from previous turn. Nothing to do there. Let's just end the year. You have successfully exerted your influence upon Prince Alexander. Now, you remember we did this last time, right? So now if you look up here, influence three or more characters, one of three. 
Prince Alexander becomes influenced by King Philip the Settler. Okay, well, let's go look at this. So Prince Alexander now has a positive influence or a positive impression of us. Uh, his opinion of us is cautious. Okay, uh, why is he plus 20? towards us well he's plus 40 because we influenced him he was negative 20 before plus 20 because we are both bold okay plus 20 because he's our heir so we automatically get that and he's negative 60 percent because he's suspicious of us okay well we've influenced him so that's good now duke dirdos uh, down here dirdus dirdus that's what i meant um we can influence him potentially the queen consort we've already i thought we already influenced her um well let's pick the duke we could make him our chosen heir well we don't want to do that we can't i don't think we can influence him yet because he's too young uh also family marriage for prince alexander the queen consort we could divorce her, but what we want to do, so we're on court members right now, right? So we've got characters up here, court members. Then you have all characters. So we can go down here and look at all of the different characters and you see their family here. So the Sipsilids, we have the oligarch, Dionysa, the orator, uh, Craterus, okay? We gave them that other city, right, uh, to manage for us. Well, let's go to Craterus. Uh, we could influence him here, but I don't think that we have enough of what it takes. That's correct. We need 200 gold to do influencing. All right. And so this guy's greedy and educated. Next turn, we'll start trying to influence him just so this family's happy with us. Right. So now we have two different families, the Argeids and the Sipsilids. And Crataris is the head of the family Sipsilis. Uh, or Sipsilid, I should say. And he's got all kinds of different traits, right? He's a tactician. We don't really like tacticians. Um, she is an orator, okay? And we can use them for different tasks uh, because we have we are going to need governors. We're going to need generals. We're going to need agents. We're going to need ambassadors. And we're going to need chancellors uh, and spy masters. And you can see the characters that are eligible for each role as we keep going. But I'm not going to jump too far ahead here, right? I'm going to go ahead and just kind of play by the tutorial. So we've got our warriors here, and we're going to just go set them up here at Pella. And we're going to heal them. Now, that is not something we've done yet. This costs, costs us one order. But uh, when they're idle, they heal at one hit point per year. And as if you look down here, it's got it took six damage. So we're only at 14 of 20, right? We could release the general. Okay, we may want to do that. We could also promote them. We have plenty of training up here. But let's heal them first, all right? So we'll click on heal there. And there are various characters that can give you bumps and bonuses for healing so that your units heal faster. Generals can have that uh, booster bonus. Uh, your leaders can have that. So just something to keep in mind there. But they're now going to get, you can see, we got plus five immediately. And as long as they're idle, they'll get another plus one next turn. So this group is a level two uh, group. They're 4.8 on the attack, 4.6 on the defend. Now that we've healed them, though, they have no more actions this turn. All right, they're healing. So they're cooling down, as uh, the game calls it, when you take a, a kind of a major action with them. Next time, we'll be able to put them on sentry duty. Uh, I think that's what it's called. It's like guardian guard duty maybe and they will get a big defensive bonus for just sitting here in our capital city okay next unit well these guys are sitting up here there's really no reason to do anything with them until we get the settler up there choose production masalia so see it will show you here well, that says choose governor. We're not going to do that yet. I know the tutorial asks us to do that eventually. But let's go out to Massalia and choose production. Because remember, we did the uh, council last time. And so that gave us those nice bumps and bonuses. But this time, I think what we probably want to do, we could do militia, which is uh, sort of the same idea as doing a sentry duty. We could build more warriors if we wanted to. We have these civic projects, which I could, I would say, if you don't have need for another worker, another scout, another settler, 
so on and so forth, then you can just keep clicking on these all the time, right? And, you know, uh, bump these certain things up. They give you boosts and bonuses when the city doesn't have anything else to do. But I do think we do want another worker there. It's going to take seven years. I usually like to have two workers in a city, you know, at, at the least, at the least, right? Uh, next unit. Okay, let's go out of the city view, and we go over here. Okay, we already looked at them. That's fine. They're just going to hang out. We could even uh, pass, sleep, sentry, um, and it'll wake if anything comes within five hexes. Let's just put them on sentry duty. Now let's go to our scout. Uh, he's already been all the way over here. He could, oh, he can't get to the lavender bush. He can harvest the pigs. They're available again. It consumes one order plus 10 food. Let's do that. And then let's get over to these gemstones. Those look interesting to me. And let's harvest some gems. So as you can see, and we got 10 culture for that. As you can see, you know, you can still harvest even if you uh, don't have any actions left. Although we did have an action left, so that really wasn't applicable there. We're just going to leave it here. That's fine. We're not going to move that unit anymore. And I think because of that, we can end the year. But let's look down here. City production. Masalia finished the a project council one turn summary we exerted our influence in Ale on alexander uh we still only have 191 gold we're going to need over 200 to influence anyone else and it shows us reminders we could still pick a governor for pella uh we're not going to do that yet until it tells us to do it end of the year Okay, Prince Alexander, your son, gives in to his basic desires more often lately. He has lost one discipline. And so events in this game will cause people's traits to change and uh, they'll get new, uh, ar not archetypes, but they'll get new descriptors, right? So Oligarch Dionysa is a pathfinder and timid. Well, depending on what happens in different events or what you uh, tell her to do, that, that may change, or she'll get added new ones. Uh, King Philip, our, our leader, is bold, and we know our prince is bold as well because his favorability towards us is boosted because we're both bold. Okay, uh, down here. Improvement finished. The farm is finished. Well, great. Let's go to the farm. Oh, it's right there. I was already on it. Okay, so we have an idle worker here. He has finished the farm, which is great. Uh, what else can you build, my friend? Well, it'll pop up here what he can build. He could build a quarry here, okay? Now, again, you're going to want to read through here for the different bonuses. You can see here, potential bonuses. If this is an arid hex, all right, uh, is it? No, it's temperate. If it was arid, we would get plus 20% stone. If it's adjacent to a mountain, plus 40%. Adjacent to a volcano, plus 40%. Uh, I don't even know what the hell a redemption cathedral is, but if it was that, it would get plus 20. Autarky gets plus 20. So you can see what all of the potential bonuses are. But a lot of those aren't here. Uh, and you can see that because it says build quarry, and it just says plus 5 stone a year. Well, we don't really want to do that then. How about the gold up here? Build a mine, plus 48 gold, and then you can see uh, why we're getting various bonuses, right? So you see that plus 40 uh, output from the gold, that's the base, but then we get plus 20% because the founding family are artisans, so artisans like gold. We have other potential bonuses, but those aren't applicable here. Um, what else can we build? We could build the Odeon here, and you can see potential bonuses. It's not adjacent to the Hamlet, so we don't get that. I think we're going to build the gold mine. Why don't we do that? So let's move up here, okay? And this worker will start to build a gold mine, because that was the only place where we got a bonus. You know, you got to min-max the heck out of this thing. Every time you see a bonus, you got you to go after it. Okay, we have another worker. So this worker has spawned in Pella. So we have our one worker building our Temple of Zeus. Uh, I said we probably want to do, you know, the quarry. Now, if we hover over the quarry here, you see plus nine stone per year. Why is that? Well, we get the base plus five output from the quarry, plus 40% adjacent to a mountain, and plus 40% because it's adjacent to another mountain, right? It's got mountains on two hex sides, so we get two 40%ers. I like that. 
I like that. We get, it appears anyway, we're still on the worker. It looks like we'll eventually get that here. Now, it's not saying we could build one there now. Uh, build Odeon, build farm. This would get some bonuses because it's output from Lush and out plus 10% because of an adjacent farm. So you get start to get all kinds of bonuses if you build a bunch of farms or a bunch of quarries together. But we're going to move over here and build this quarry. So let's go over here and we'll build that. Okay, now we should have enough gold to start to um, influence people. Court members, you know, could we influence uh, Alexander again? I don't think so, because we just did. Duke Dirtus, no. Uh, let's go to all characters, though. Can we do the Queen Consort? No. I think maybe you can only do it once to a character. I'm not positive on that. I, I just can't tell you, uh, but I think that's true. How about the Oligarch? Can we influence her? Well, she's already plus 20 towards us, right? She likes us. Uh, Leonidas, the younger. Oh, and so this shows also uh, that she's a general, right? This is our succession. This shows that she's a general. Then we have this new family down here, Krataris. Well, we already made her a general, the oligarch, part of the uh, Argiad family. Let's work on the Sipsilids a little bit, right? So let's influence, uh, influence via King Philip the Settler. Let's do that. So now you see the star pop up here, and we are going to be influence Crateris. What a name. Uh, next unit, Defenders, okay? These guys are here. I talked about last time. Now you can see they're at 19 of 20. Um, they are idle. So there's a cooldown of one turn, but they are idle now. So they should actually... Idle units heal plus one hit points per year, so they should get that back automatically. Release the general. Now, I thought, oh, that—that that is what this is. We can put these guys on sentry duty, so they will wake up if anything comes within five. Now, I thought they got a bonus there, but I guess not. I guess that is not true. Uh, we could release Philip as their general, but why? I mean, they're in our capital city. We could heal. We could promote. Why don't we promote them? All right, what can they be? Guard one, promote to guard one. They get a plus 10 on defense. It leads to guard two. They get experience points and it costs 82. Well, we got a lot of training up there. If you look, we got 817. We get 111 each turn. Let's do that. All right. So they are going to be guard one. They are now level three. And if we go up here, we can see all of their special traits, right? So their defensiveness went up to five, uh, but they've got fierce. So they're both plus 10% on both attack and defend. They're also now guard one. So they're plus 10% on defense. Uh, they have a commander leader, and you can see what bonus that gives. And a second bonus from the commander leader. They're infantry and they're in urban. They get plus 20. I mean, look at all the bonuses we're building up here. They're also from a pleased family. And if we go right up here, Argiad, please. They're plus 132. The Argiads really like us. So one thing to always keep in mind is Philip and our court are not part of any of the families, right? They're, we are our own family. And then we have families that are in our realm, okay? And so right now, Argiads and Sipsilids, uh, the Argiads are pleased, the Sipsilids are cautious, but that's why I'm starting to try to influence their leader uh, so that they, they are pleased as well, because it does give you bonuses, right? All right, next unit, uh, choose production in Pella. Okay, interesting. So we don't, we don't have any production here because we just built that other worker. Let's click there. It's idle. Um, what do we want to do here? We Oh, let's do a specialist. We haven't done that yet. So what is a specialist? Well, these are your basic. The settler, worker, scout, and militia are your basic units. Then you have military units. Look at the hoplite. Hey, we, we can't build that yet. It requires developing uh, culture and a stronghold. You can see over there to the right what it requires, what we're missing. Then we come down here to specialists. And what does the specialist do? A farmer specialist gives us plus one growth, okay, and plus five food per year. It also gives us plus uh, 
one growth per year as farmer, and it spreads our borders out, okay? From a rural specialist, uh, we are not a rural specialist, but if we were, it would give us some science, and it costs us a citizen, okay? Well, that's fine. Um, and its production is 40 civics. Interesting. Okay, uh, we could also do a minor. Now you can also look here where you have completed projects, this plus, that adds a specialist. So let's just do that. Let's put a farmer there and in five years we will get that. All right, uh, close that. Excellent, next unit, our scout. Um, he's already harvested the gems. Let's come out here. Oh, we can't get onto the water. I thought this was a coastal hex, and maybe we could. Now, you can always see this. This means it needs time to regenerate. So we harvested the pigs and the gems last time. Uh, what is this? This is wheat. Let's go harvest wheat, because we don't have a whole heck of a lot to do with the scout at this point. Uh, city production, Pella trained a worker. We knew that. Max orders. We had some extra orders, so five is sold for 50 gold. Excellent. Turn summary. Um, we read this about Prince Alexander, and we can still appoint a governor, but we're not going to do that yet. Move unit. Nope. Uh, scout. So we're just going to put this on uh, century or pass. Let's pass that, and let's do end year. Okay, free settler is discovered. So we finally got a new that settler that we were researching, and it's told us that it wants us to do trapping next so that we get the slinger. We could also do stone boost, which just gives us a you know very quick boost of stone in three years. Um, trapping husbandry, which opens up the pasture, so you can start to uh, pasteurize not like milk, uh, horses, cattle, sheep, pigs, and goats, uh, or pull us. So we can ask to declare war, we can build walls, we could also build a hamlet. This is a good one, right? But let's do trapping, all right? It's asked us to do trapping, let's do it. Where are we on our goals? We need to get to that third city, but we now have a settler group. Uh, that's great. Influence three characters. We're working on the second of the three. And then it also asked us to build a shrine. We have one year to go on that. Okay, so we now have an idle civilian. It is the, the uh, settler. So we're going to move the settler as close out here as we can. We can only go to here. Past there is a forced march. So let's go to there with the settler. Excellent. Let's go to any defenders. All right, let's put them on sentry duty because we already promoted them uh did they heal by the way now why does it say that that idle units heal plus one per year do we actually have to put them to sleep uh you know or on sentry maybe maybe that's it so now they're on sentry we'll go back and check on that next time and see if they get that final hit point back of healing next unit let's go to our scout and our scout uh, where could he go harvest something? Let's just put him on some wheat. Let's harvest some wheat there. He could maybe go, what's here? Scrub? No. Um, what is this? Remove scrub? No. Ah, he's fine. We don't need to harvest anymore. It's fine. Uh, and now we'll just tell him to pass for the rest of his turn. And let's end the year. Excellent. Greek paganism is founded in Pella, and we could read about that here. 0% um, chance of spreading to new cities right now anyway, right? Uh, holy city is Pella. Current followers are the Argiad family, right? Because this is their city, Pella. Uh, it was founded there. You have successfully exerted your influence upon Craterus, so we finally did that. So we've now gotten two of three characters. Um, Oligarch, a knight the Younger, has converted to Greek paganism. Well, that's because she's in the Argiad family. Duke Durdus is now old enough to be tutor. Wow, everything's happening. The Argiad family, the entire family, has converted to Greek paganism. That will keep them happier with us, okay? Now, this is kind of the new one, Duke Durdus, and we'll talk about that in just one second. Shrine built. You have built a shrine and founded Greek paganism. Each nation, nation has a unique pagan religion which is founded and spread by building a shrine 
Pagan religions are not able to be spread to other tribes or nations. They don't have the disciples, improvements, or theologies of world religions. And you can see here, world religions, you know, Judaism, the Zoroastrianism, and Christianity give you all kinds of open up things. You know, I mean, that, that takes you down whole different paths. But we had to get paganism for our own people first, right? And it's going to influence the families in our realm. So the four world religions, you can read about them uh, at your leisure, are founded when a nation achieves each one's specific prerequisites. Prerequisites? Yeah. Or when founding the family seat of the clerics. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. I'm not going to go into all of this in just the basic tutorial. When we do our Let's Play, we'll talk a lot more about religion. It's one of the ways you can really win the game. A re religious opinion affects the discontent of your cities. Um, if the religion is pleased or friendly, discontent will decrease. When a head of a religion is pleased or friendly, they are able to convert other characters to the religion, so on, so forth. But Greek paganism is all about our families, the Greeks. We can't really spread it to other empires. Uh, oh, one thing I would like to point out is because uh, we... Is that true? Oh, when we get this specialist, this will make our city boundaries. It hasn't happened yet. When we get that farmer specialist, it will make our boundaries go out. But now you can see, because we built this here, the boundary did extend out one um, because we built an improvement here. And that is the Temple of Zeus. And if we were to go here, we can, you know, uh, see the various bonuses it may give us and whatnot. Um, okay. Now we have a free worker, but let's go to this first. Make, make next decision. So every time you get one of these exclamation points, it's a decision. Upgrade Philip. Now what the heck does that mean? Philip is you and the general of warrior, Pella. Okay, <laughs> he is, that's kind of, uh, is that right uh, English? I don't think so. Is that right English? Well, I don't, is that correct English? You know what I meant. Philip is you and the general of warrior. Okay, um, he can now promote. He has gotten for, far enough along from the different things we've done with him to promote him. He And we can decide, right? He can become an engineer. So as a general, he's plus 25% attack and defend against sh uh, siege or ship units. That's interesting. We haven't talked about that yet. As leader, all units plus 10% versus siege and ship units. Okay, so those are two different bonuses would make him very powerful against sieges. Um, and it ups his strength to one of three. We could make him swift as a general. It means we can go one more hex per order. And also, yeah, so that's basically as the general. And then just as the leader of our people, it's kind of the same thing. Plus one fatigue limit uh, for all units. Wow, that's really powerful. For all units, we can go one more hex um, before we get fatigued. Strength, one of three. Or we can just upgrade our discipline from two to three. What does that do? It gives us a global 32 gold. Uh, warrior Pella's, uh, or warrior of the Argiad families get plus four experience. Huh. I think I'm going to do Swift. That seems kind of powerful. All right, so Philip has now upgraded, and he is now uh, listed as both Philip the set. Let's just click on him very quickly, and you can see up here, he's now Swift. He's bold, and he's Swift. Well, those, those are two good things to be. Next unit, uh, here come our settlers. They can only go to here. Okay, and then next unit, uh, this is our scout. Well, we can have them harvest something else. Maybe, maybe we're going to we're gonna run out of things to harvest. Let's just bring him down here. I don't know. Is there anything else over here? Let's check it out. Landmark. Hey, we did. The Aegean Sea. We get a plus one legitimacy here because we discovered the Aegean Sea. And uh, excellent. Okay, cool. Let's then go to, oh, this is our idle worker. What can the worker build? We could do a farm there. We could do a mine here. Again, 
Uh, so this is plus 60% because it's on a hill, just something to think about. A mine is not something that we have built yet. We could also build the Odeon. Let's build a mine. We need a mine. Now you can see the potential bonuses. Hill is plus 60. Well, that's a good one, right? That is, this is on a hill. You probably only want to build mines on hills, right? So let's go here and let's build a mine. And with that, I'm going to call this an episode. When we come back next time, I'm going to end this year. We're going to found our third city. And then we're going to influence the third character. And we will have met all of our goals. We've also got trapping going. We're Greek pagans. Uh, we built a shrine. A lot happened this time. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this, learned quite a bit. I know I did. I'll talk to you next time. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo.